What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, it's no longer speculation. We were going to do a show about this, and we didn't actually think they'd do it, Brian, because it would just scream desperation is the word that most people are talking about right now. That is the word of the day. Got it. And there were some announcements, obviously, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, Kevin Feige on the road, and the gang. Um, Some announcements that people were waiting for. This was obviously sort of a shock, but uh, I haven't been keeping up. Brian has been keeping up with the updates uh, on what's been announced, what hasn't been announced, what people were expecting, what what hasn't happened. Uh, what, won't, what won't happen, I guess. So, uh, Brian, could you go down the list of things that were announced? Uh, look, look. Let's not bury the lead. Let's talk. Let's talk about Avengers and then go in reverse because I don't know if anything else really matters. Um, then we can get to that because a lot of the unclear, uncertainty, chaos stuff around the schedule. I don't think any of that got resolved. So we'll talk about that because mm. that's interesting. But let's talk about the the big news. So we get. Official confirmation, Joe and Anthony Russo are back. They are the directors of Avengers 5 and 6. Avengers 5 has been retitled Doomsday. So that should tell you all you need to know. So what was Kang Dynasty is now Doomsday. And then they had kind of the Disciples of Doom in a bunch of hoods, brown robes and hoods on stage. And out came Doom and sort of his green getup and mask, and the actor pulls off the mask, and it's Robert Downey Jr. saying, new mask, same task. Officially back, but now back as the villain for Avengers 5 and 6. So yeah, let's do it. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with all the ramifications. Okay. If it's a variant of Tony Stark that is a, a, a Doom, your feelings towards that possibility um weirdly i probably like it a little bit more because it kind of leaves the true doom on the table you and i agree but it also precludes the real doom from appearing i feel like in the near term um just because rd the shadow of rdj is so big and so his portrayal, however he takes this, right? You're talking, I mean, Academy Award winner Robert Downey Jr., right? However he takes this is a huge deal and is going to be viewed as a standard of sorts. However, he, maybe he has it in him because he's a brilliant actor, but he does not embody the Victor Von Doom that I envision. <laughs> so I think that's a huge question. But I do like it a little bit more, and I think it actually becomes a little bit more of an obvious, desperate commercial play if he's a variant of Tony Stark than if he's Victor Von Doom. Because Victor Von Doom, I think I'm completely out if it was that. If it was that, Brian, I'm going in there with skepticism. Quite frankly, I'm going in with skepticism regardless, but certainly, but the fact that is, if it's Victor Von Doom, I'm going there, not in, not in it at all. Because it's like, really, yo, him? And it's like, there's no, you can't get a real, you mentioned it before, Brian, I think I it's brilliant. You, I also told you when Kevin said that on the podcast, he had signed somebody big from the OGs already. Mm -hmm. And it's him. This is it. He clearly said the the Hugh Jackman Wolverine template. This is it. Like, they're going to keep doing this. I I don't think what Chris Evans, spoiler alert, I don't think what Chris Evans did just this past weekend is the only thing where he's going to be doing in his company. Certainly not. So I think you just start right now. Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, just go down the list. 
of every, you know, Avenger major actor that we've had and just start going through like, who else are they going to play? Cause they're all going to come back as some variant of themselves or another character, whether we like it or not. If star Wars couldn't grow past the Skywalker characters, Marvel might be showing that they either don't want to or don't believe they can grow past the original iteration of actors that they use to bring this universe to life. I think they're under the impression or the illusion or the frustration of feeling that they have no choice but to go back to the OGs because they know that what they got right now ain't going to cut it, Brian. That's the, that is the reality. The OGs had to come back. Now, having RDJ come back, Brian, and I hope that show that we did, Road to RDJ, gets a little bit of more traction as to what we thought. Yeah, you have a show literally titled Road to RDJ. We talk about <laughs> with this on the pod, where he drops on the podcast, and here we are a couple weeks later, RDJ is officially back as, as, in a new capacity. My approach, or... Some would say many people's approach who have thought about um, introducing Doom. Uh, and I've mentioned it before, Brian, on the show. And I think I sent you a link, Brian. I don't know if you have had a chance to look at it. Uh, is the Books of Doom, uh, where he simply is being interviewed. He's being interviewed uh, and he's telling his life story. And it's a great read. And it's a series. And I thought that would have been an appropriate uh, way to introduce Doom so that when we get to a Doom movie, we know who this guy is, what, or what he's about, how slick he is, and all the things that make Doom Doom. So when he meets the Fantastic Four, his defeat is it's like Doom is just not that easily defeated. He's the guy that just keeps on coming. And... He's not a one and done dude. He's a Thanos level dude, Brian. And this right here is just a show. Yeah, this is the this is the this is the Deadpool and Wolverine playbook. On the one hand, I don't totally blame the studio. Like they are seeing their cash cow dry up before their very eyes. They are mm -hmm. desperate. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. care what they say publicly. They are desperate. Mm -hmm. They are losing money on projects. And These they things, just got to make more than a billion dollars. And they, and the, well, and the thing is, if they can't cut the budgets dramatically, the movies have to do well. Now, Deadpool and Wolverine has delivered. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman gave them an event. To put in perspective, the pressure that was involved there and it leads back to this discussion. Remember, Deadpool 1 is a $50 million budgeted movie that made $730 million. There's a lot less pressure when your budget is $50 million than the reported $250 million that Deadpool and Wolverine carried for its budget. So yes, that movie now looks like it's probably going to get to a billion dollars. But guess what? It kind of had to get there or pretty darn close for the project to be profitable. They don't want to cut budgets on Avengers movies. They'll cut budgets elsewhere. We know they cut it for Blade. They're going to cut, or if they ever make it. But in Avengers movies, they want to spend, you know? Yeah. And signing the Russos is sort of a concession to we're willing to spend. I don't think the Russos yes. would have come back, if, you know, especially not the way they spent on other projects. I don't think they would have come back for a $100 million Avengers movie. So that, they're yeah. going to put $300 million a piece in those movies, probably, which means those movies have to be. <laughs> Billion two, billion five, two billion. That, that's the range. And the reality is when you announce Russo Brothers back, RDJ back, I can't quantify for you what that means, especially in terms of opening weekend box, but it's not small. Like if I'm no. being honest, it's probably what, 200, 300 million dollars. They probably just automatically added yeah. to each movie yeah. because RDJ is headlining as the villain. But to your point, creatively, Storytelling wise, long term, does it make you feel better? I don't think it should. Does it make you feel more excited or feel like you have to be there opening weekend for Avengers 5 and 6? Yes, it does. And that's all I think they're after right now. That's it. 
But yeah, do it in a way that's... Listen, I'm not saying my way is the right way. I'm just saying my way is a better way. Yeah. I think there's some evidence, though, whether your story is the, the story they use. And, and Fantastic Four was featured in this Hall H Comic-Con panel. So we'll get to that in a second. I continue to think the breadcrumbs are pointing to whatever universe the Fantastic Four are in, that's the one of the future. And this announcement makes me feel more so in the sense that if this is a very, an evil variant of Tony Stark acting as Dr. Doom and Secret Wars leads to the annihilation and reset of the MCU, that kind of lines up. Because RDJ is not going to play Dr. Doom, for, I don't think, for another 12 years. No. Right? So he's doing two films to help his boys out and make another massive trunk of cash. Which probably to me is evidence he's not playing Victor Von Doom because I don't think Kevin Feige is stupid enough yeah. to use up Victor Von Doom in one like two-part movie. Absolutely not. If he does, then I'm, I'm He should be fired. Through. He should yes. be fired. If that's yeah. true, he should be fired. And I want to reiterate my way. Again, if you saw the RDJ, Road to RDJ um, video, my approach is simply this, Brian. If you see the, you've, the evolution of Tony Stark throughout the films, every major event that happens, he there's a change. By Iron Man 3, he's, he has anxiety, he, he has PTSD. By the beginning of Endgame, he is... And secluded away from everything, yeah. Brian. Yep. And remember, in Iron Man 3, he wasn't the one in the Iron Man suit saving all those people. He was doing it remote. Yep. And again, he was the first person to say life model decoy. That would have been his answer for, I said, I'm done, right? Yeah. And the only person that would know would be probably Happy or, 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 or Tone, um, Pepper. That's it. That would be the approach. But they're going this route, and I know I'm like I I'm not I'm just I'm just not cool with it, but we'll see, Brian. So All I have to say is we'll see. Yeah. So when he says new mask, same task, this is how I am and he says I like playing complicated characters with his other quote. I know where you're going, but go ahead. So this is my question really, that I think is the one I would watch. When Iron Man 1 came out, and RDJ on his comeback tour delivers the defining iteration of Tony Stark, the shtick, the style, the charisma, the improvisational dialogue, when that movie became the hit that it became, the entire rhythm, tone, and style of the MCU flowed from his personality if we're being honest yeah if you if you think about it the through line to every single marvel movie is really the personality of robert downey jr it's mm. that you know quick one-liners a little bit of humor a lot of style a lot of panache right yeah that they built the entire cinematic universe on the back of his portrayal when he says new mass same task that's the standard that I hold him to. And if he pulls it off, he should actually probably win another Academy Award, even though he'll never nominate him for it. <laughs> but what I mean by that is Marvel needs a tonal shift. They absolutely do. The same thing is not getting people to the box office anymore. Yeah. If he pulls this off, even if it's as Tony Stark from Universe whatever, mm -hmm. what I want to see, I don't want to see any resemblance to 616 Tony Stark. I want to see Robert Downey Jr. in his Academy Award winning bag doing something entirely different tonally in terms of dialogue, in terms of mannerism. And if he pulls that off, my expectation would be that the MCU might again pivot toward whatever style he imparts in the role. 
And I wonder if that's why, you know, so I'm making a case for that's the case for, from a creative standpoint, bringing the actor back. That wasn't what I thought you were going to say, but this is what I think might happen. And all of you said is true. I agree. But I think the approach is what if he actually succeeded? Because think about Ultron, what he was trying to do there. What if he actually succeeded? And he's the one in that universe uh, that has accomplished that task of putting a shield around the world or whatever the case may be, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And he's and he's playing. That's what I mean. Same math, uh, different math, same task. That's what it points my mind towards. What he wanted to accomplish, and perhaps in this universe, he does. I think it's a great point. I mean, in in, in effect, it's, they're riffing on Loki, right? This is the we're going to pick a point in the timeline that you're familiar with, mm-hmm. and then this other part of the multiverse that Tony Stark took the fork in the road, the other direction, yeah. right? And whereas Loki was redeemed in his TV show, this Tony Stark fell from grace into super villainy. Has, has, has there been a comic where Tony Stark has played them? Good question. I don't know the answer. We know there's evil Tony Stark, but... I gotta ask Tracy. We know there's evil Tony Stark. Know. That was the one that Tom Cruise was rumored to be... They were, remember when they were talking about cameos for him? Yeah, there was that version of Iron Man in that was supposed to be in Doctor Strange too. That was the evil version. Um, but as Doom, I don't in the in the classic green costume. I'm not familiar with that. I'm asking him now. But I mean, response. let's now let's step back and go through the creative, the, the realistic commercial version of how we got here. Because I think we know how we got here. They, this conversation with Downey, we know has been going on for over a year. Because of Tracy comments said no, of course. Because of comments he's made, and he's been holding out. Certainly, for this ain't this ain't this wasn't a blade. This wasn't Mahershala Ali calling Kevin. No, this was them going. Thi- this was more like the Avengers in Endgame. To your point, going to the cabin. Except they went to the cabin like twelve times, <laughs> and they're like, "This time we have a. This time we have an eighteen wheeler full of cash." The next time I was like, this, that, next time we got the helicarrier full of cash. Until finally, they probably, and he probably said no to all of it. Until they finally said, almost like um, in the Gladiator 2 trailer, when Denzel asked Paul Meskel, what could I give you that would satisfy? <laughs> and he probably said, another character. What about, I, I think, it, I bet it was his idea. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like an actor who understands the yes. mythos, who is like, yes. you know what would be fun for I think me I could to do? do? This, but... For me to do? How about Doom? And they said yes. That's what it feels like to me. And then you got the studio higher-ups looking at their box office, looking at all the struggles Disney's having and saying, of we need this guy. So whatever it takes, like, you know. Because they know his involvement will bring box office returns but a year ago 18 months ago they didn't have that same sense of desperation right they had guardians no. they still would think we're kind of forever They're like we're fine we're fine we're one movie no. away everyone's gonna come back we're good and then as things continue to spiral his the leverage went has up. gone Their leverage more went and down. more negative yeah and we can't and they can't afford that right because disney plus is based on that and if we lose mcu fans what the hell is Disney Plus for? Star Wars? <laughs> that's, that's looking more like it is. And bad Star Wars at that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like they can't they can't mess afford they can't afford to mess this up, but they're not starting off the right foot with I think MCU fans and get MCU fans. It goes because those are dwindling. I'm talking about Marvel fans. I, those yeah. are the ones that know. Like I just asked Tracy, he, it, has has Tony Stark ever been doomed in the comics? He said no, never. Yep. He says that's a that's an MCU thing. Yep. But that's what I'm saying. I think it's a Downey. I think it's Downey. He's like, this is it. Take it or leave it. He's like, you can leave the cash, but leave me the role. And they were desperate enough to say yes. I mean, they, this entire thing, Russo Stark. And by the way. Chris Evans is 1,000% going to be in Secret Wars. Oh, yeah. Why? Because 
you know what Disney's gonna they're gonna want to see some of those original actors fighting Robert Downey. They're gonna bet on the emotional weight of last time you saw him sacrifice himself to save all these same actors. This time they're gonna have to kill him. Themselves. Yeah. Which means Robert Downey's on the text chain because they saw the Avengers text chain. Uh, if it's Wolverine going behind, uh, oh, Hugh Jackman's in the movie. We know that, but that's what I mean. The, he's they're on the text chain, and he's basically like, "Listen," he's like, "Don't don't say yes to the to the first offer. Don't say yes to the fifth offer." He's like, "You make them give you this. You make them give you that." I mean, these guys are going to be getting back end on this movie like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> All of them. All of them, and Disney will do it. Because even if the margin's really thin, they just want it to ma- They want it to be spectacle. In order to, but will it be spread classic? into other stuff? Will it be what it what? Classic? I don't think so. Deadpool yeah. Wolverine is spectacle, great spectacle. It is not classic, and I think no. it'll be the same with Avengers Five. But people are out there, Brian. Like this movie is like, it's but but it became must see. They did it. Yes, they made it, must see. It, it is must see. It is must yeah. see. But it, 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 must will, see. it will fade. It will disappear. Endgame lasts. You know, Infinity War lasts. Avengers 1 lasts. You know, Ultron disappeared. Ultron faded. Right? It's going to be more like that, I think, mm. ultimately. But, oh, when I wa- I see Ultron and I rewatch it, I, I really did. There were some really good moments in that. Uh, but whatever. Yeah. What else, Brian? <laughs> I don't know. You want to make another show of the next ones? Or you want to just keep going? Let's keep going. All right. So let's go in reverse order of importance. So let's do Fantastic Four. So retro, retro, retro. That would be my like my my take. Is like we they brought the the car, the Fantastic Car, on stage. Ah, okay. And it looks very Jetsons. It looks very old. Okay. And then the cast, you know, comes out. They showed a little bit of footage. The only thing I noted really from the footage was at the very last shot, you see like the eyes of Galactus apparently looking through like a building at them. Other than that, listen, it's still pretty early in the process. Um, sure. But, you know, there was a lot of conversation. I will say this. There's a, there's, a, there's a shot of the four of them, not in costume. Um, and I will say the way they've got Joseph, I don't know Joseph Quinn as an actor that well, but the way they've got his hair cut and like his face when he's he's pretty much bald or like with a little bit of buzz, mm-hmm. almost like Chris mm-hmm. Evans' version of Johnny Storm from back mm-hmm. in the day, not the one in Deadpool. He does look related to Vanessa Kirby. I was one thing. I was like, if you look at the shot, they kind of look believable as yeah. siblings. Brother and sister. Yeah. yeah. I will say, Pablo, though, you continue to be on an island. I look at that photo. I'm sorry. I I I don't want this to come out wrong. I just don't buy Pedro Pascal as the smartest man in the world. I just don't see we it. In shall the photo. see. I don't see we it in the photo. Shall see. We shall see. I still have faith. So that's what I, they I think yeah. I think he's just a brilliant actor. That's what I think. And I think he can do it. Uh, but we shall see. So they gave a little bit a little bit of a teaser, did that. But really that thing was this idea of sixties. They're really, you know, it almost the, the themes they seem to be pushing was almost kind of like WandaVision in a different way. Maybe those first couple episodes were like old school TV. Like this felt a little bit like that. To me. Like we really want you to know this is a period piece. So you believe the visual aesthetic of it with regards to color palette, lens being used, that sort of style you think yeah i would not be surprised if, if, if that would be interesting the earth, to see. Whether, whether the earthbound stuff will have sort of a, a a vintage look and then even space i mean if you think about it in the 60s here there was a lot of space right 2001 is a 1968 movie it lost in space was on tv so you know star trek is in the late 60s original series so I don't know if they're actually going to go for something that sort of looks like a modern version of that appearance but it wouldn't surprise yeah. me it really feels like they want to push that as a theme. Again, I'm going to reiterate my distaste for wanting to get Galactus back in the fold and this version of the Silver Surfer. But that's changing uh, now, right? Isn't there a rumor she's out already? Well, it's more like a... Uh, not that she's out, but it's like it's a one and done. Oh, she's only doing this movie? Correct. Okay. Yeah, because I that's saw that, I mean. the rumor. Yeah, she, okay. Which is also weird. So, 
Because I think it's only meant for this. And again, it's so, it sort of sounds like a redo of the, the um, Rise of the Silver Surfer, really. Like, what is she going to do? Is she going to thwart Galactus's attempt at, at, at destroying, uh, consuming the Earth? Well, that makes me suspicious that Norrin Rad is going to be at the end of this movie then, right? Doesn't it? If she's one and done, doesn't it make it doesn't it make you think that like I don't, I, she's not the I don't real know. surfer. She's like the prelude surfer and then the real surfer is out there. I don't know. Or they're just maybe I, he's not I, I, in the I movie, but they're holding him back and he is going to be certainly they're holding him back. He's coming like he's like, the, yes. yes, I hope to see Zen La and because Zen La, if you go back to I don't know the comics, but in the cartoon, uh, Zen La is a one and done sort of, I would say, utopia of a world that you only see once and it's whisked away as a punishment. Right. So I don't see why they couldn't go that route, Brian. They shouldn't. I, I like. I don't want to be earthbound all the time. Why? Yeah. They did this with Galact um, Guardians of the Galaxy. We, you know, I mean, we went to we went to a sort of Earth, right? Yeah. But. It wasn't Earth. We knew we knew that it wasn't Earth, and right. that's what I want to see. I want to see different places. I don't see why they can't do that. Why I gotta be Earth? Yeah. So this comparison to why Rise of the Silver Surfer, the only difference is that we're gonna probably see Galactus this time. Yeah. And that's my concern. Let's see. Yeah, I agree. What's next? Uh, so they had Thunderbolts gather on stage. They showed a teaser. I didn't really garner a lot from that. Um, it was some good banter and humor. David Harbour showed up in costume. No one else did. And he's like, guys, didn't you get my email? <laughs> We're all going to dress up. That was pretty funny. Um, but I still felt like, you know, if, I felt like even in the not seeing all the presentations live, but just kind of feeling the progression of these presentations, Thunderbolt still feels to me like the small, small scale, you know, kind of relative of all this, right? It's like they had cap four before it. They had Fantastic Four and then the Avengers and RDJ after it. And it kind of is like, you're really trying to, you're not really doing a good job of making me feel like this is a big deal. And, and that's still how I felt after the panel. And I did not see that the particular teaser for this, but I think the task is very tall for this to be relevant. And like, you know, like I'm hearing, uh, I forget her name, the, the actress who played Ghost in Ant-Man 2. And like, she's going through like, oh, here's where we find Ghost. And I'm like, does anyone care where we find Ghost? Like, I don't care. It was a forgettable character the first time around. Why do I care? Like, where what you're up to now? Like, it's just like you're, still, you're, is... you're still in a roster spot, man. It's like you know. Then Cap Four. So Cap Four, they obviously built it around Harrison Ford, who kind of mm -hmm, hammed it up mm -hmm. on stage and pretended yeah. to Hulk out on stage and all sorts yeah. of stuff. But they added something. And it's interesting. I saw the trailer for Cap 4 in front of Deadpool and Wolverine, and it's slightly different than the one that's online. There's like a little bit different. Oh, so. uh, a couple more shots of Isaiah Bradley like fighting in his like yeah. in his attack scene. And then there's a little bit more dialogue um, throughout the course of the trailer with Sam Wilson and Ross. And then in this, they added a line that basically says um, that Ross's the thing he's selling Sam on is to assemble, reassemble a new cast of Avengers, which I think was an interesting omission from the, from the online trailer, you know, which is sort of obviously makes that movie a little more probably central to what's going to happen in Doomsday and Secret Wars. But the way it was phrased made me kind of feel like, who exactly are you calling here? You know, it's like we kind of have talked about this, of the existing Avengers we have there aren't that many exciting names right now. So was that mm -hmm. a hint that like maybe there's some cameos in Cap 4 to be on the lookout for that might set the stage for Avengers 5 and 6? But anyway, I thought that was a notable reveal that they put in the Comic-Con footage. Here's the thing, Brian. They're going to go off nostalgia. Because again, Captain America is not in a world where we meet regular dudes, right? We're talking True. about, we're having discussions and meeting interesting people, important people, Brian. This to me sounds like sort of a recruitment task that he's on. Yep. 
And uh, along the way, he's going to get into some adventures with some of these individuals. And it would have to be a setup, though, right? Because Ross, if Ross is going to be Red Hulk, he's a he's not on the side of justice in this case. So he presumably is tasking him with this in part to then destroy the Avengers from the inside. No, it could it could be corny enough that he just um. I don't know if he's going to be conscious of what he's doing. I think he turns into the Hulk, and and, and this is just the ramification. Okay, he's just the red, and he's just he doesn't know what he's doing when he's the Red Hulk. He's just the Red Hulk. Okay. I think. I don't think they're thinking it that deeply. Where the Red Hulk is thinking about having monologues, you know what I'm okay. saying? Yeah. Okay. So, fair. Okay. So that's where I'm thinking they're going with it. But they've, cl- I don't know, they've made Ross seem pretty sinister in the trailer. I mean, he do- he doesn't come across as on the side of good. You know, where he's kind of like, work with me, Sam. And then he's kind of giving him that funny look in the before Isaiah kind of attacks him. The implications are he's he's not on the right side of this, I think. So I would assume his, his motives for wanting the Avengers reassembled are not for the protection of the world. Yeah. But... But like I said, when you connect it to Kevin's other commentary about not everyone gets to be in these movies, I think it suggests to me that this recruitment is not limited to, you know, the Shang-Chi's and the Captain Marvel's and the Miss Marvel's of the world. Hmm. So. We'll wait and see. It is a big, uh, there is a bit of curiosity as to who he will go seek assistance from or seek to collaborate with Brian and how he goes about convincing them, right? If he's set with this task and has to get it done, I don't know. Interesting. Let's see, Brian. Because, hey, this has been, uh, and and I will get to Mr. Kevin Feige talking about Blade. They want to make the right movie. They want to be sure that they're making the right movie. This uh, movie doesn't, if you look at its uh the timeline of this movie and, and its production time and all the stuff that's gone on behind the scenes they don't know if they have the right movie <laughs> perhaps they feel a little bit better about this one but still not sure they're probably numb it happens yeah when you become numb to it and you'll be like you know what just this is good enough Let's see, Brian. Let's see if this is good enough. So I think that ties to the last point I would make about the panels, which is things like Blade, things where there's been a lot of questions and uncertainty as to what's going on. This this presentation left all of that untouched. No clarifications, no real timeline commitments on other things. It really just focused on these select few projects that are... So I wouldn't... If you're a Blade fan, I don't think you walk out of comic-con feeling any better about its prospects or that it necessarily is going to shoot this fall they didn't announce a director you know like there's there's just nothing so it's just like these other projects that are in limbo are still in limbo and maybe d23 is what they're banking on to address some of that later this year but it, it is notable in my mind that there were zero updates on things like that yes or no question give me a timeline does Mahershala, does Mahershala Ali do this movie? No. Timeline? For him dropping out? In terms out. of, yes. Uh, I would say by January 1st. Because if it doesn't shoot this fall again, I mean, he already shot the new Jurassic World movie. Um, oh, okay. Or, in, or he is shooting it now. Actually, he is shooting it. Sorry, he is shooting it now because I actually got a saw thing the other day. They just move locations. Mm-hmm. So he's shooting that now. His schedule, which means his schedule is still open to shoot Blade this fall, which is what they're targeting. But they don't have a director. The thing's getting rewritten again. I, I think if this is not, if this last, if this latest attempt does not lead to an actual movie getting shot in front of the camera, I think he officially is off the part as of next year. I mean, he's like I said, he's he's about to be a co-lead in what sounds like a pretty intriguing Jurassic Park reboot with a pretty high profile cast and great director and great writer. Who's directing? Gareth Edwards. 
Ah, okay. They must have pissed him on a hell of an idea. So, well, they got the original writer. The guy who wrote the first Jurassic Park is writing this one. Came back to write this. Okay. You know, you got ScarJo, you got him. I mean, you got you got heavy hitters on that. And I'm saying, like, if this comes out and it's good, the movie's going to make a billion and a half. It will, because dinosaurs sell. And, like, if that happens and he's the co-lead of a franchise like that, why is he? He's not gonna. He's not gonna bother with Blade. Not after all this. No. Uh. And then they just. Get, I guarantee you, he is not happy about Deadpool. Hell no! I mean, <laughs> I, why would you, Brian? I mean, the double whammy of the way Snipe says it, and then Ryan Reynolds looking in the camera like that. That's. <laughs> I don't care if that's in jest. It's still shots fired. Yeah, man. It's still it, it's it, it, it's like it's like you're being roasted, but you know, you know, you know the feeling. You yeah. know, like you know, it, it touched you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and not in the right way. <laughs> so I wouldn't. I mean, I'd be like, yo, I ain't, I ain't doing this. Man. Do you think he does it? No, and I think. I don't. I don't know how. I don't, I don't know how soon. I mean, I, I know right now he's emotional. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I would be a little bit like, ha ha, right? You know, or and we still don't got a director. We still rewriting this joint. It's been five. There's just too many things that you can point to to be like, yo, enough is enough, yo. You know, this is not where I need to be right now. You know, and and they already they're trying to push this replacement on me you know what i'm saying and i haven't even so it's like for what yo for what brian before we uh um end this so no superman trailer is it over what's that is is stc uh is it over no no it'll still be going through tomorrow are there any big announcements planned for none that, DC? None that, uh, none that we know. I mean, they've already put out, they already did like Penguin and Creature Commandos. There's more, there's more TV stuff that they put out there. So no, not yet. And they obviously did okay. one in front of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. So we'll see. Okay. But, all right. but you said that there is an event coming up for... Um... Well, there's a, well, there's supposed to be a DC event at some point this year. And then there's this Christopher Reeve Superman documentary in September. Okay. Which also, right. yeah. I, I, I'm i just, yeah. Okay. I have no basis. I was simply pointing out that it would not surprise me if they looked at the calendar and a company that is hemorrhaging cash and just lost the NBA <laughs> is, uh, might, might want to get some footage out there of their f- new flagship franchise. Wow. That's a separate show right there that's an interesting show that's a business show right there we gotta do yeah i think Um, i think you're i think you're whether it's the ip or the entire company i think 2025 will be a fulcrum year for david zasloff and wb i think that it's hard to imagine that they can continue on the path they're on i mean i'm I'm not i'm not an analyst like i said i'm not an analyst i don't but just the hits to the body that they're taking as a company, where the stock is, the cash, the debt load they're carrying, they're running out of time. <laughs> so things like, will you sell DC are calls that David Zasloff, I believe, would take. That of two years course. ago, he would have hung up the phone <clears throat> immediately. If I was, if I was, yo, if I was Apple, if I was somebody in Amazon, if I was any of those dudes, I'd be making that phone call. I like, think it's Amazon, take- if it's anyone. Hell yeah, because they know what they they'll know August first. Like that's the thing. What do you think they're doing with that? That thing is a that thing is the definition of like a trial run for what they really want. Prediction after the the first two weeks after the release of August uh, 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 of the Batman Cape Crusader on August first will be a telling tale as to what Amazon has. And what they potentially can have. Yeah. I, to be clear, I don't think Amazon, this is just my opinion. I don't think Amazon has interest in all of Warner Brothers. 
but I think no. Amazon would make the call to buy the IP. IP. And, yes. and we can have another show about that because they're doing it in a lot of ways. Like on the fantasy, like swords and sorcery side, they are very quietly building an empire. Like they have Lord of the Rings. They have Wheel of Time. There's a bunch of these books that I don't read. These like, you know, very popular bestsellers among teenagers, among, like all age demographics, women also. Amazon has the rights to all of them. They're yeah. optioning all of them as shows. Wow. They are built, so like they're empire building in genre. Mm -hmm. And things like Cape Crusader are clearly like the prelude to a grander design, which is why they did business with Sony even. They were like, we don't care. We can do this. Like we can yeah. put the Amazon label on all things Spider-Man, all things Batman, all things DC, and we can make it bigger. That's the best. Yeah. That, I mean, I've been talking about that for a long time already. It ain't going to probably be $100 billion, but it'll, it'll be a big number. Yeah. So back to whether we see a Superman trailer. I still think it's sooner rather than later. Whether it happens this week. I mean, I was guessing this week could be the earliest you would see it, mm -hmm. but I still think it happens sooner rather than later. All right. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of some of the announcements that's been uh, uh, some of the announcements that's ha been had uh, regarding Marvel uh, and Doom, Robert Downey Jr. Also, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the announcements Marvel has made. Um, RDJ being Doom. You can't say enough of what we were, you know, of what we already said. And most people are saying, Brian, most people don't like this. But obviously, our, uh, um, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, wants to take on a role and do something different. And it is totally believable. And I, I think this is that is how it went down. He told Ke he told Kevin or spoke to whoever. I said, if you want me back, this is what I'd like to do. And they're like, yeah, I mean, we're bringing the Russos back. We're going to bring everybody back because the gang you got right now cannot get you to the promised land. I'm sorry. Nope. I don't think you get them to the playoffs. Um, <laughs> playoffs? Um, <laughs> so you said most people aren't going to like it. I got to – if we parse the, the audience – the, the nerds, people like us. Yeah. I think that's what you're talking about, generally. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I want to draw that line between the casual audience that got on board for the end game ride. What do they think about it? Are they excited because it's RDJ back in a, Mar in a, in a Marvel role? Like RDJ, Marvel villain. Does that get the casual person interested? Because that's what gets you to $3 billion, $2 billion, right? It's not the hardcore fans. Regardless of the fact, Brian, this is, the, this is just a, I think is a fact. RDJ brings the bucks. This dude could have came back as anybody. I agree with and that. And people were going to be excited and see, just see what he does next with this, sure. right? I agree. I think, I, so, I, I actually think the, the artsy critics community will hate this, hate it. Mm -hmm. Because I think they're going to say he spent way too long playing Tony Stark when he could have been doing roles like Oppenheimer. And we got the role in Oppenheimer. He wins the Academy Award. And what does he do with this new <laughs> fame and notoriety? He goes right back, back to the to MCU. Me. So I actually think it's going to be this separation of different fan groups who are in, who are either intrigued or there's gonna out. be factions there's gonna yeah. be factions but i think overall i think the the majority of all the factions is a negative um sentiment towards this and i this think enough. if you see the first footage of doom and if he comes off as just like he's riffing on the tony stark we know and love i think I'm, everyone will be out I'm, everyone I'm out will now be out. i'm out now but I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. You know how people like they. There's a crowd for them, and you just peek around to see what's happening. You know, and 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 you no, just what, walk away. No, no, you know no, exactly. No, right. 
this type of stuff right now because we're in like the rubbernecking crowd. We're in the like, you yeah. see the smoke coming up from the wreckage. You slow down. If yeah. it's big enough, you slow down, right? Like, what's going on over there? There's a lot of exactly. sirens. There's a lot. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of bad stuff that happened. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. kind of where we're at now. He's. They got to tell us that what we're what we're what we're driving past is actually not wreckage. That it's actually salvage. We'll see. Know. Yeah. Yeah, let us know what you guys think of all the Marvel updates, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Ninja Report. The show goes on! Yeah!